If you're at home looking for something to do, check out Sherry with Tech by Tech 2. Well, hi guys, and thanks for joining me again for Tech Bites at 2. I'm your host, Sherry Ballantyne, your local instructional technology facilitator. So, are you looking for standards aligned videos, ready made lesson plans, interactive modules, quiz builders, and more? Well, I think I found just what you are looking for. Today, we're going to be taking a look at PBS Learning Media. This website is your one stop shop for curriculum targeted digital resources. Here, you can find thousands of classroom ready resources to inspire and engage your students. Content is, avail is available in all educational and subject and topic areas. I like this site because it really does um, engage diverse learners. You can give each student an indiv individualized learning plan and students actually have the opportunity of choice here. I do love the fact that this site provides culturally relevant instructional resources as well. So our objectives for today are to take a look and be able to access the site, which is pbslearningmedia.org. I want you to be able to utilize this website in two or more ways. And I want you to think about ideas of how you can actually incorporate PBS Learning Media into your classroom. So are you guys ready to get started? Okay, let's go. So when you first get to uh, pbslearningmedia.org, of course, you're not going to be logged in. You're going to start from here. And let me just log out so you can see what that looks like. The cool thing about it is you can still actually explore the site without logging in. But some of the benefits of actually signing up for this site are the fact that you can save your resources and you can assign um, assignments to your students. So once you actually um, sign up for this site uh, and you sign in, so I'm going to, going to sign in through my Google account. The first thing that you may want to do is go ahead and create your profile. So under your name, you can go to profile here and you can begin to create your profile. Put your school zip code in. You can choose the grades and subjects that you'll be teaching um, and all of the information that you need to get started with your classroom. If you need to go back to the home page, all you have to do is click right here in PBS Learning Media in the upper left-hand corner. So when you first look on the site, it already, based on what you chose in your profile, gives you a lot of different resources that are readily available to you. So let's say that I was going to take a look at one of these resources. It'll tell me the grade level, the name, and what the topic is. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this particular resource. And here it shares a video with me and it gives me a little synopsis of what this is going to be about. I can click on my support material and in my so support material, I see I have some background reading, a background essay, and I have some discussion questions as well. It also has the standards. So I can, in my profile, when I set it up, I can set up what standards I will be looking at. So I have my common core standards here and it tells me each standard and gives me a little um, explanation about that particular standard. Notice over, over here to the left, I can share this to Google Classroom. I can assign or share, and it has all my support information. And if this is one of my favorites, I can mark this as a favorite so it'll keep it um, saved for me. So as I scroll down, I also see that there are national standards, next generation science standards, and so forth. So when I want to go back, I just click on my home button and it actually takes me back to the beginning. Now, if you're a member of PBS Media, um, PBS, the actual television show, had a lot of great shows for kids, teens, and even adults. So what you'll notice is that if you remember some of those shows, you can actually search them here. So this may be telling my age, but I don't know if you guys remember The Electric Company. Yeah, they remade that too. So the electric company, when I click on it, it has all of these different videos. Um, so it'll show you what it is, whether it's an interactive or whether it's a document and so forth. So I can scroll down. I can see the different activities. Here's some math activities here. Or I can look at the whole collection of the electric company. 
So if I were to click here, it will take me to the whole collection and then it will give me the different things that I have here. And remember again, I can assign this to my Google Classroom. Here are some full episodes of Electric Company here and it even has some professional development also. Um, another, let's see if I can think, another um, show was a Design Squad. So here we are with Design Squad. So it has a lot of great uh, lessons and videos and interactives. I can go over here and I can um, change my search up a little bit and choose just videos or so forth. Or I can look at the whole collection here. So Design Squad has um, videos on sound, uh, suspension bridges, electric highways, and so forth. And it has tons and tons of them. So again, if I wanted to just look at the lesson plans, I could just click on lesson plans and get my lesson plans here. So there you have that. Um, another um, show they had, I think was called Physics Girl. And here we have Physics Girl. Um, is this really 3D? What is color? and so forth. And again, you can narrow your search over here to the left. You have your whole collection here. If you wanted to look at your whole collection of physics girl. So I'm going to click on the whole collection and then it starts to narrow down the particular topics. It even has some do it yourself demonstrations that I think your students would love to do at home, like how to make a cloud in your mouth or how to make a hurricane on a bubble. So there are like 14 demonstrations here. Optics and waves. There are like 11 of those here. Motion and relativity and so forth. So you can search by shows that you may know or <clears throat> you can search by your subjects, your grades, and your standards. So if I click on subjects here, take a look at this. I mean, there are tons and tons of things here. So in science, you have your things like your life science, your physical science, social studies, you have your economics, your U.S. history, math, all of the math that you can think of that we all love, your English language arts, your language, your ELA writing, and so forth. You have your engineering technology. How cool is that? You have health and physical education. We have some um, preschool resources, professional development, the arts, and world language. So you have all types of topics here that you can search and look for to use in your classroom. So if I were to click on one of these, um, let's say that I were to click on, hmm, let's say life science. So when I click on life science, it gives me a whole ton of categories of things that we would study in life science. And then it gives me the resources here to the left. If I needed to filter my searches, I could do this up here by going to my grade, choosing a grade. And if I wanted to, I could choose the type of resource that I'm looking for. Um, otherwise, it's going to just kind of give me a list of all the different resources that are available. So here are my interactive lessons, which are really cool and fun for students to do. Um, I have my videos up here as I scroll down. There are more interactive lessons, which are really great. Have my lesson plans and so forth. So you can really kind of narrow this down and create some really fun things for your students to do just in this one website alone. Again, you can choose the grade levels that you're going to be working with, and you can choose the state standards depending on what state you're in. And of course, we can choose our standards here. When you click on the standards, um, you can click on type of standards. You can go to Common Core or whichever standards you're going to be looking for, but I'm going to go to Common Core State Standards here. And I'm going to select a document. So I'll select Mathematics for now. And let's say that I want, I don't know, eighth grade. So when I browse that, it gives me tons and tons and tons of things, of course. Um, if I click on one of these, let me just show you what that looks like. So it'll give me the results for that particular search.
It tells me a little bit about it. Gives me information on the particular standards that I'll be covering. And again, if I want to choose this as my favorite, I can. If I want to share it with my students or assign, I can. And then it gives me a ton more topics. So these are um, some great interactives that the students can actually do online. Over here, um, under your name, you also have some things such as your favorites, which this is where you can choose your favorites in any particular um, lesson or interactive. But also um, here, you have your dashboard, you have folders so that you can create folders of different types of uh, subjects that you wanna put together. You have assignments, you can set up classes here as well. So if I were gonna set up some classes here, I could do that here. And look, I can also import a class from Google Classroom. So that is pretty cool too. You also have tools here, and I can also find these particular tools in my dashboard as well. So I'm going to click on dashboard. And when I click on dashboard again, I see my tools here. I see my assignments, my folders, my classes, everything that I saw under um, my name right here. If I want to create a storyboard, which I really like this feature, um, because you can take any um, lesson that you're doing and you can put everything that you want in that particular lesson right on the storyboard. So if you wanted to put the title here, you could do that. Then you could add media. So whether you want to create an interactive um, or put a video here, you could do that, or, or even pictures. You could add text, um, any kind of clip art that you need. Your um, You could add some questions in here. And this could be just one place that the students go. Maybe they're um, looking at studying a motion. And you put everything that they need in this one storyboard and they have it right here. And they don't have to go anywhere else, but right here to this particular storyboard. And you can assign this to your students. You also have your lesson builder here where you can actually create a lesson for your students. You have um, your storyboards here. And it'll take you through how to actually create that particular storyboard. And you also have puzzle builders here. So it'll take you through how you can um, do this digital lesson and create um, puzzle builders as well. So here again, it's just like a one-stop shop for everything that you can think of that you can share with your students. Really, this is a really great resource and I hope you can find this useful to use in your classroom. So take a moment, check it out. But before I go, look, you can even switch to the student view. So if you wanted to look at how your students view this particular site when you give them lessons and things, you could switch to the student view here. And you could see that the student here has one assignment, whether they have projects or so forth, you can look and take a look at that. And this is my stuff for your students. And then I can return back to my teacher view. So I hope you can utilize this site in your classroom. And when you get a chance, come back and check me out for more Tech Bites at 2. Thanks. See you soon.